Good afternoon. Thank you for your patience and thank you for your, your prayers. Amen. Amen. We welcome you in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the Lord. Blessed by the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. We are gathered here to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, and to remember our sister, Therese, giving thanks for her life, commending her to our merciful Redeemer and comforting one another in our grief. Amen. We will have a gathering song by the chancel choir at this time.
And let the people of God say amen. amen. If this woman had a impact in your life, why don't we put our hands together and tell God thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Amen. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, you formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life. We glorify you. Christ Jesus, the resurrection and life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who, who sorrow, and our sure confidence and e everlasting hope, we worship you. Amen. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our dear sister Therese. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console those who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank God for memories. We thank God for sweet and precious memories. And so as our speakers of remembrance come, let's continue to be in prayer and in warm and loving remembrance of our dear sister Therese. Please come in this order, Terry, Mark, Mike, and Jeff. Therese was a wonderful friend of mine for over 40 years. When I was first teaching at Laurel Hall, I would sometimes worship here at Emmanuel, but I hadn't decided to join yet. Therese would sing with the folk choir when we had folk services in the parish hall. It was her smiling face, front and center, and her unbridled enthusiasm that convinced me that I should join Emmanuel. And that was a very good decision that I made, and I owe that to Therese. We had many adventures together through the years. As we attended the same church, we worked together, we were in the same theater group, and we lived in the same condo complex. In other words, we couldn't get away from each other. <laughs> we shared many lunches and dinners together, many trips to Starbucks, and many shopping excursions. When it came to spending money, we were bad influences on each other. <laughs> One of our favorite places to hang out together was love, often accompanied by one or two of my sisters. Um, she loved my family. We occasionally invited her to join for Thanksgiving dinner or 
and I even took her to visit my sister in Illinois once. She hadn't flown in a while. She, she was a little nervous at the airport, and she was very upset that she had to remove her shoes. I told her not to argue with the TSA agents. <laughs> she loved to tease people, so I just looked at her and said, not now, not here. <laughs> so we, we survived that just fine. And Therese had a great, great experience in the Midwest visiting with my sister and I. I also took her once to see the Munchkin star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame because she played the part of a munchkin in the 1939 movie, The Wizard of Oz, when she was six years old. They filled in the background scenes with children. She told me that the star wasn't for her, but I told her that it most definitely was. But my very, very best memory is when I needed to find a home. I knew I wanted to buy a condo, and I liked the condo complex that Therese was living in. So, I just had to put that little bug in her ear. She walked all around the condo complex and found one that was empty with painters inside. So not being shy, she walked right up to the painters and asked them if she could have the phone number of the man who was selling the condo. And because Therese had quite a way with people, of course they gave her the number. So she gave the number to me, I gave it to Ron Viola, who was my agent, and I got the condo before it even went on the market. Um, I like to share this story, again, as a nod to Therese being in The Wizard of Oz because of that famous line, there's no place like home. Now Therese is in her heavenly home. We know here at Emmanuel she loved to be a greeter more than anything else standing as a greeter at the pearly gates with a twinkle in her eye, welcoming every single arrival with the words, there's no place like home, there's no place like home, there's no place like home. Today is May 18th, and this day is uniquely apt um, in a way for remembering Therese, um, in a way Therese would have appreciated. May 18th also was her mother's, uh, Madeline's, birthday, and Therese dearly loved her mom. Each of you knew my aunt so well and loved and supported her so much that I know she will always remain for you a vivid, lively presence, smiling, laughing, dancing, singing, and wishing you joy. If I can add something to your memories of her, it may be to share a bit about her family. She had an older brother, Ed, who was my dad, and a younger brother, Ron, and the three of them were close in age and closer still in spirit, each affectionate with the other, and each quick to joke and tease. And that side, as Terry said uh, and knows, never went away. Uh, two days before she passed, I helped her call her younger brother, Ron. And Ron, by the way, is joining us uh, via live stream, so thank you for your patience um, as we put that together. Um, and toward the end of her loving phone call with Ron, she could not help but provide him some sisterly advice. Now, Ron, mind you, has just turned 90 years old. <laughs> Yet here was Therese with a big smile on her face, sternly telling him, now, Ron, you just try to behave. <laughs> In her girlhood photos, Therese's smiling and delighted expressions leap off the page and through time. She was happy and joyous, spreading sunlight. As Terry said, she was one of the many little munchkin extras in The Wizard of Oz. Born and raised here in Hollywood, she was lucky to have a mother who took full advantage of this magical location. Ron recalls that their mom chose a music school for Therese on Sunset Boulevard that just happened to be 
the music school where Judy Garland, then Francis Gum, had, uh, had music lessons as well. Looking at Therese's young, beaming face, I think Judy was very lucky that Therese was too young to audition for Dorothy. <laughs> when I asked Therese last month if there was anyone she especially missed, she immediately said, yes, my mom. She was always such fun. The apple did not fall far from the tree. Therese, too, was always such fun. Here's what uh, Ruthie, Ruthie Willie, the leader of her young adult church group, said in a note to Therese when she was 32 years old. You are the most fun girl, Therese, the guarantee that any group you grace will be happy and gay. This is a real talent to make those around you happy too. You are irreplaceable. Therese moved to North Hollywood in the mid-60s, and by 1968, she was volunteering here at Emanuel Lutheran, where she helped out uh, in the crib and toddler's room uh, one Sunday each month. And soon after, she enrolled her son in the Laurel Hall Preschool. And I know this because she saved the application. <laughs> and for over 50 years, her life would be entwined with Emanuel Lutheran and Laurel Hall. I'm wearing, by the way, the staff badge from the 2019-2020 school year. So yes, at age 87, she was still on the staff at Laurel Hall over 50 years after first volunteering in the toddlers and crib room. You know, one can just see from the photos she kept of her surprise 50th birthday, from her 70th, 75th birthday, the photos of her retirement party from the city of Burbank, where the city leaders paid tribute to her for years of service to that city, to the photos of her in the many a late shows where she was a lifetime member, and from her five decades of service to this church, where, as, as you all know, she was still serving as a greeter, scheduled to serve next week. Uh, one can see from all of this that Therese brought energy and verve and kindness to many, many people throughout her life. And that Ruthie was right, uh, Therese is irreplaceable. Uh, we're also remembering today her son Richard, who passed away in March, and with whom her life also was closely entwined. Therese dearly loved and supported her son throughout his life, beset though it was by challenges that made it impossible for him to live independently or to form trusting relationships with others. Nonetheless, Therese loved and cared for Richard. And as for Richard, while it often could be hard to see his feelings, he did let her know that he loved her back. In Christmas, birthday, and Mother's Day cards that Therese saved, Richard repeatedly and genuinely let her know how much he appreciated and loved her. <sighs> of these notes, I think my favorite one <laughs> is this Mother's Day message from Carlton Cards. Now the printed message reads, to mom with love, so proud to have the greatest mom a kid could ever get. And want to say you're loved a lot and wished your best day yet. Happy Mother's Day. Underneath that message, Richard asked, every word Carlton Cards wrote, I agree with. Happy Mother's Day. Love, Richard. My aunt was something else, a devoted daughter, an exuberant big and little sister, a heroic mother, and a wonderful friend. So will we all remember you, my dear Aunt Therese.
Some 40 years ago, a late was being formed and we decided to do a series of musicals. And we had me pro auditions where you come act and you dance and you'd bring music to sing a song that you liked. Well, this woman came in and I said, well, where's your music? And she said, uh. <laughs> and I, I looked around and because this was at Laurel Hall, I, I found some, some hymnals and I said, well, pick a song and, and sing that, okay? And she said, okay. On the word Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of G. Okay, okay. <coughs> Going on before. I loved it, you're in. <laughs> By the way, what was your name again? I didn't realize it at the time. In a theatrical relationship with a woman named Therese Haas. Now it is true, Therese loved to perform. She was in everything, absolutely everything. And she was great, she was one of my favorite figments and, and, uh, and, and several others, and she was, she was great. Arsenic and old lace, that, that sort of thing, and, and she just really, brought a great exuberance to the part. But then something funny happened. She started to show up at auditions where there were no parts for her. And we said, Therese, there's no part for you. And then we looked around and there's Jeff Zimmer over there and we said, well, maybe we could write one for her. <laughs> so she continued to be in everything that we ever did. We, we just loved her on stage. But I have a theory that it was more than just the performing. Over the 40 years, we, us charter members became a family. We shared uh, the work, of course, but we also shared many personal things and we got to know each other very, very well and we ended up being supporting each other for our old and new members. And I think Therese showed up at those auditions because she wanted to be with the family, her late family. The rehearsals, the show, and nobody liked the rehearsals. The rehearsals, the show was just so important to her. It was so important to all of us because she was an important member of the family as a friend, as an auntie, even a nana. And she did something special. And I'll tell you the truth, theater groups do not last this long. They just don't, they fritter out. And I think the key, and I really believe this, is that Therese and people like her are why this group lasted so long for all the love, and we love all the love and the thanks that we were able to conjure, touching the lives. It was truly a ministry of this church to each other and all the new people that came forward. And then there was me. Now, those of you who know me, as I demeanor, no, I'm not common demeanor at all. I'm famous for being over overboard. And uh, Th Therese was, was always so respectful. She would introduce people, he, here's our director. It just, it made me feel like, well, maybe I was doing something right. And then things started happening, like we were doing Music Man and we had a children in Music Man and the children were in the dressing room having their own show. And the, the audience could hear them going, ah, you know, that sort of thing. And so, you know me, Mr. Calm and wonderful, I started to storm out toward the dressing room, almost there, and then I felt this hand on my heart. 
And I looked down and there she was. And she says, I'll take care of it. Yeah, but uh, you know, you're not listening. I'll take care of it. And we never heard the children again. She took care of it. And there was another time, and I don't know how this happened. There's a little room, those of you know, there's a little prop room off, off the stage. And I opened the door and there was Rita, Rita Culp and Therese. And they said, we're here to pray for you in this very room. And we grabbed hands and they prayed for me. And I just want to say no one before or after has ever done that. They've ever done that. Again, going beyond. And then finally, finally, um, I was uh, on the stage, you know, and I was having one of my moments. And Therese and somebody, and I didn't, didn't know who it was, they just walked by and the person was saying, well, he's so mean, he's so mean. And, and, and Therese said, well, yeah, he wants to have a good show. She said, the other person said, well, it'd be nice if he explained that to us. A good idea. And I turned around and, no, and then all of a sudden, in the back of the room, I saw Therese checking children in, turned, and she smiled. She changed my life. She made me better. And I miss her, and I thank God for our time together. And everybody in the light feels the same way. All right, all right, right, yeah, yes, you're in. And, and by the way, uh, what was your name again? Everybody, one, two, three, Therese Haas. Thank you. With church and school bells ringing, we celebrate this friend. We honor her with singing and love that never ends. Who knows when we all will meet again? But when those show to Sing again. I'll be seeing you in the Narthex Sunday morn. You welcome guests, your smile is warm all day through. Giving QVC a call. Or happily shopping at the mall With Terry at the picture show Coral Cafe Magnolia Grill I'll be seeing you In dress all purple, bright and gay In habits usually worn by nuns that smile still brighter than the sun. We tease each other mercilessly, but when the 
rising's done. We'll share lebnity and non, and laugh the whole day long. I'll be seeing you with Robin Gale in Parish Hall, or on the fields of Laurel Hall, all day through. Work was very hard. You kept the peace out in the yard. The children gathered round. You heard the call. You loved them all. I'll be seeing you in all of Carol's medley shows. A child in Oz up on her toes, or tapping in those shoes with bows. I see you flying on the stage, and I believe one thing. When I think about that smile, I know you got your. Wings. Thank you, Marty. Our first reading comes to us from the 23rd Psalm, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Please rise as you are able as we read our gospel lesson. comes to us from St. John chapter 11. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God, the one coming into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated at this time. And I'd like to take these next couple moments that I have to share with us what the Lord has given to me. Uh, Certainly a passage of scripture that I think is appropriate for uh, the time and the season that we find ourselves in. Um, uh, There was, uh, there won't be too many more like Therese, amen. There there won't be too many more like her. This passage of scripture, St. John chapter 12, I'll read it for you. Just three verses, St. John chapter 12. Six days after the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. 
Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. This is the word of the Lord. Today, today I am assigned and tasked to do a couple of things uh, in remembrance of our dear sister. We want to celebrate the life of, of Therese. Uh, we want to encourage all who mourn. And, and certainly we want to proclaim Christ crucified and risen. And in particular moments like this, these become so important for us because we can find comfort in the word of God. And this particular passage of scripture, this scripture lesson, a dinner was being held to honor Jesus at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Uh, they lived in a city called Bethany. Jesus would visit their home frequently. Often, Jesus made his way to the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They were his friends. Reminds me of the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. On one particular visit that Jesus made to their home, Martha opened up her house to Jesus and his disciples, and there he proceeded to teach Bible lessons and scriptures in their home. On another occasion, while uh, Jesus visited their home, um, it, it was immediately after Jesus had received notice that Lazarus was gravely ill. For those of you who know this story, we know that Lazarus subsequently passed away. Jesus delays his trip to go see about Lazarus. And when he finally arrives, he discovers that Lazarus has already been placed in the grave. The family comes to Jesus and says, had you been here, my brother would not have passed away. And Jesus says, your brother shall live again. They say, yes, we know at the end of time and the resurrection takes place when God comes back. Yeah, we, we're familiar with that. He says, no, your brother will live again. And we all know that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. This was the second visit. And on the third visit is, is where our scripture picks up today, where Jesus is being hosted and giving a dinner party in his honor at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Someone's saying, well, what does this have to do with Therese Hobbs? What, is, what does that have to do? Well, well I want to suggest to you that this, this Bible lesson from St. John chapter 12 offers us a glimpse into the character of our beloved sister, and it serves us as an uplifting tribute to her life. Let me, let, me, let me see if I can help unpack this. Uh, the first observation from this passage of scripture that we've read uh, is, is, is that this family, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, invited Jesus into their home. And I want to suggest to you that Therese invited Christ into her home. Uh, uh, Jesus was invited. Jesus was welcomed in their home. Christ was invited and Jesus was welcomed in Teresa's home and in her heart. How do you know, preacher? Well, I, I was told uh, that she extended unconditional welcome and radical hospitality to those in their home. She unconditionally loved and cared for her son. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly new here, although I've been here for two years. 
I'm, I'm fairly new. And as the new guy in the church, uh, people will tell you the stories of certain members of the congregation, right? Sometimes unsolicited, right? <laughs> Oftentimes it's unsolicited. And, 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 and so, Ter Therese, I, I, I didn't really know uh, Mike how to deal with Therese. She was always asking me, where's your lovely wife? Where's your lovely wife? She, my wife works uh, at JetBlue Airlines and she often works the weekends. And Therese would always say, where is your lovely wife? And uh, I said, she's at work, Therese. Oh, that's too bad. I said, what's wrong? I miss her. I said, you don't miss me? She said, no, no, not that much. <laughs> and she had a straight face. So I, But she was just joking. She was having fun. She was being Therese. There was a, a sense of unconditional welcome and radical hospitality in her heart and in her spirit. And she loved and cared for her son. And although that may not have been a popular decision, right? Some of us know the story. Some of us uh, uh, don't know the story. But it, 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 was, it was a tough go for her. However, she never stopped loving. She never gave up. She demonstrated this unconditional love and welcome and radical hospitality in her home. Second observation from this text that I think we can glean uh, uh, from our, our dear sister's character is that this family gave generously in the Bible lesson Mary used a container of perfumed ointment. It was called nard or spink nard. It, it, it was a pretty large container of this perfume ointment to anoint Jesus. It was a plant-based ointment, and it was a mixture of essential oils, herbs, and spices, and it wasn't cheap, right? And normally... Just the head is anointed. However, it is recorded that Mary uses this expensive concoction, this mixture, this fragrant oil, plant-based uh, 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 ointment. She anointed the feet of Jesus which suggested that there was nothing more valuable to her. There was nothing more important to her. There was nothing more precious and or significant to her than her relationship with Christ. And I submit to you that Therese gave generously. She gave generously of her time. She gave generously of her talent. She shared her humor, her laughter, and her smile. And she was always ready to provide support and encouragement to anyone who needed it. She gave generously. And then finally, we observe from this Bible lesson that this family worshiped the Lord. After liberally applying the nard uh, on the feet of Jesus, she wiped his feet with her hair. She worshiped. This was an act of worship. How do you know, preacher? Because back then and even now, a woman's hair is her glory. You don't have to agree with me. I had a sister. I have a sister who used to get her hair done at the beauty shop. And she would literally sleep like this for at least three days so that hairdo didn't get messed up. I, 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 I know that a woman's hair was then and it still is a part of her glory. However, Mary publicly worship Jesus. She took her glory and gave him glory. 
She publicly worshiped. It didn't matter who was looking. It didn't matter what other people thought. She did it to bless him, to praise him, and to magnify Jesus. Therese was no different. She entered this place with thanksgiving. She entered this place with praise. She came before God with a worship. She came with joy. She came with excitement. I will never forget, no matter what was going on, when Teresa, Therese received the sacrament of Holy Communion in this line right here in this church, there was always a smile on her face. There was always joy in her heart. You could tell that she was ready to worship Christ. Hallelujah. And although we have to acknowledge that this is undoubtedly a somber moment because we are mourning the loss of two family members, mother and a son. However, and moreover, we can find comfort in the biblical assurance that those who pass away in the Lord are cherished in God's eyesight. So well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you for being a doorkeeper and a greeter on earth and move on up a little higher to be that doorkeeper and greeter in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Thank God. upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops that's where you'll find me somewhere Birds fly, birds fly over the rainbow. Why then, oh, why can't I?
Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you'll find me. Somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly, birds fly over the rainbow. Why, then, oh, why can't I? If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why, oh, why can't I? Thank you, Renee. Please rise as you're able, as we confess what we believe as believers in this Christian journey that we're on in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We'll read this together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Most high and holy God, pour out upon us your one and unifying spirit and awaken in every confession of the whole church a thirst for unity in you. God of mercy, gracious and merciful God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O oh God, a mind to meditate on you and a life to proclaim you. God of mercy, O oh God of all, with wonderful diversity of languages and culture, you created all people in your image. Free us from prejudice and fear that we may see your face in the faces of people around the world. God of mercy. Oh God, we thank you for times of refreshment and peace in the course of this busy life. Grant that we may use our leisure for the renewal of our bodies and minds, and that our spirits may be open to the goodness of your creation. God of mercy. Almighty God, with a mother's love and a father's care, you have blessed us with the joy and responsibility of children. As we bring them up, give us gracious love, calm strength, and patient wisdom that we may teach them to love what is just and true and good, following the example of Jesus Christ, God of mercy. Almighty God, by our baptism into the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, you turn us from the old life of sin. Grant that we who are reborn to new life in him may live in righteousness and holiness all our days. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, God of mercy, hear our prayer, O God, and those in our hearts today and forevermore. 
Amen. Amen. Do me a big favor. Share the peace of the Lord with the person sitting next to you. The peace of the Lord be with you. All right, if you shared the peace with at least three people, put your hands together. Amen. And let's thank God one more time for the fellowship. At this time, united in our baptism, we will pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now our commendation. Let us commend Therese to the mercies, to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. And to your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Therese Hawes. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you that she is a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, Receive her into the arms of mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and to the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Merciful God, you heal the broken in heart and bind up the wounds of the afflicted. Strengthen us in our weakness, calm our troubled spirits, and dispel our doubts and fears. In Christ rising from the dead, you conquered death and opened the gates to everlasting life. Renew our trust in you that by the power of your love, we shall one day be brought together again with our sister Therese. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our sending him comes to us from ELW number 608, softly and tenderly. You're, you're going to find that uh, although the words are the same, uh, the music that we'll be doing is uh, quite different from what you'll see in the hymnal. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals he is waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner. Come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, 
pleading for you and for me. Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner. Come home. Time is now fleeting. The moments are passing, passing from you and from me. Shadows are gathering. Deathbeds are coming, coming for you and for me. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Come Please join us in the reception room immediately outside the entrance to the sanctuary uh, for a repast meal, uh, and we can continue this celebration of life. Thank you so much for your presence. Continue to pray one ye for another. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. Amen. <laughs>